Swifters, it's Prof G. Let's take the progress view for a spin. We'll learn to display a basic circular progress view, how to customize the tint and size, and how to show or hide it in an app. Then we'll implement it as part of our Catch'em All app. Let's roll! So at the end of the last lesson, we learned to read in page after page of JSON data as we scrolled through our list. Now it would be nice if we were able to display a spinning progress view just to let the user know that we're in the process of downloading results. Now our downloads are actually going to occur pretty quickly page by page, so the progress view will show will actually only pop up for a very brief moment if you've got a fast internet connection, but this will be more useful in our next lesson when we learn to download all thousand plus Pokemon with a single click. Now before we implement the progress view in our Catch'em All app, Let's create a simple app that we can use to work on the progress view and understand how to set it up, customize it, and use it. So I'm going to head to File, New, Project, Create a New Project. I'll call this Progress View. And while there are a bunch of different types of progress views, including progress bars that fill in, and you can also roll your own progress indicator, right now we're only going to work with the basic spinning lines progress indicator, which is actually a good one to use if you're not sure how long a particular task is going to take. So I'm going to delete what's inside the VStack here, and I'll enter progress view. I'm going to choose this basic version with no input parameters between the parens, and we see a tiny gray progress spinner show up in the center of the screen. Now, if you want to change the color, you can use the dot tint modifier. I'm going to pass in dot red. And to make it larger, we're going to use the dot scale effect modifier. Enter the multiplier you want to use to increase the size. I'm going to enter four, so that should make this four times larger than the default spinner. And this looks much better. Now, we don't always want a progress view visible. So to toggle it so that it's either visible or not, I'm going to create a state variable. I'm going to call this show progress view and set it equal to false initially. Then below this, I'm going to create a button with a simple title and action. For the title, I'll pass in toggle progress view. And for the action, I'll enter show progress view dot toggle. There are parens after this. Remember, this is a method that you apply to Boolean values that will turn false to true and true to false. And I'll add a spacer between the progress view and the button and another spacer above the progress view so that it remains right in the center of the screen. Now, how do we handle toggling the progress view so that it's either shown or hidden? Well, I'll just create an if statement after the topmost spacer. If show progress view, remember this is a bool. So in between curlies here, I'll just cut out my progress view and paste it in here. So now we can just click the button to show or hide the progress view. Nice. Now, even though we're using a button here to toggle the Boolean, we can do all sorts of things to set a Boolean to show or hide a progress view. And in our app, we're actually going to create a special bool value that will set to true as our data is loading, and we'll set it to false when we're done loading. And then we can use that to only show the progress view when the data is loading. So let's head over to the Catch Em All app and code this up. So one question you might have is, where do we put our progress view? Well, let's see what would happen if we added it just above the list. And we see it just shows it above the list, and that's not at all what we want. We actually want it to show up on top of the list when it's visible and to not show up at all when it's hidden. Well, let's delete this. And remember, we can layer views on top of each other by using a Z stack. So I'll just right click on the list and select Embed in Z stack. Now remember how a Z stack works. The first item in a Z stack is at the bottom, and I want my progress view to be on top of the list. So I'm going to code fold my list again, and after the last modifier in the list, that's the toolbar modifier, I'll make some space, and then I'll enter a progress view with open and close parens. That'll give me the generic circular progress view, that little gray guy in the middle. And I'll add a tint modifier passing in red, and a scale effect modifier passing in a four. And that looks great. But I don't want this swirling all the time. I only want it when my app is downloading and decoding JSON. So let's first expand the list view again, and we'll head over to the creatures class, and we'll create a Boolean variable in here that we can use to toggle to true when we're loading data and false when the data is not loading. So I'll add that underneath our existing class properties with var. I'm going to name this is loading and set it initially equal to false. So where do I set this equal to true? Well, when we start loading data. I'm just going to highlight and copy is loading equals false, and then in get data, right after we print the URL string, I'm going to paste this in, but I'm going to change false to true. So at this point, we flag that we've begun downloading data. We've set is loading to true, and we'll eventually use this to trigger the progress view to show. But when do we want to turn off that progress view? Meaning, when should we set is loading equal to false? Well, definitely if we generate an error. So before the return in this guard statement here, I'll paste in is loading equals to false. And then the same in this guard statement here, pasting it in before the return statement. And I'll also put it in the catch clause since that's an error. Again, if we get any errors, we want to turn off loading. 
And then finally, if we successfully get our JSON and decode it, I'll add it just before the end of my task main actor block. So if we generate any of those errors, or if we successfully get and parse the JSON, we're gonna turn the is loading flag to false so that we stop showing the progress view. So now let's head to creatures list view and use the is loading value we just created. So I wanna wrap the progress view in an if statement. I'm just gonna right click and select embed in group, but then I'm gonna change the group to if creatures dot is loading. And that's it, home skillet. As I scroll through in the live preview, we can see the progress view pops up very briefly as we begin to download data and parse that out. And it only shows up so briefly because JSON is downloaded and decoded so quickly. We can try it in the simulator. And again, we're only going to see it very, very briefly because the JSON downloads so quickly. In the next listen, this will be especially useful because we're going to download all 1000 plus Pokemon with a single click of a button. And since this is going to take longer, the progress view will be up for a longer period of time. But Swifter, the circular progress view is another Swifty Swift UI skill that you've acquired. Feel good about your awesomeness and continue to hack.